Nvidia's most recent generation is seen as a bit of a flop, with a number of the cards being worryingly close in terms of performance to their last gen counterparts, and often being significantly beaten on price by the older cards too. The 4070 Ti is a bit of an interesting one though. If you didn't know, Nvidia actually planned on releasing this as the RTX 4080 12 gig. They were planning on launching two RTX 4080s at launch, and importantly here, they weren't just the same card but with less VRAM like both Nvidia and AFD have done in the past. No, they were completely different GPUs. This now rebranded RTX 4070 Ti 12GB card has significantly fewer cores, enough that most would argue this doesn't even really qualify for the 4070 Ti name either, let alone the 4080 moniker. With that said though, especially with some driver updates, is the 4070 Ti actually worth buying, especially compared to its last gen counterpart, the 3070 Ti? Well, let's test them and find out. Specs wise, the 4070 Ti is rocking 25% more CUDA cores at 7680 versus the 6144 you get on a 3070 Ti. And importantly for these days, it has 12 gigabytes of GDR6X VRAM compared to the just 8 gig you get on the older card. Now, that isn't exactly a great deal though, as I would argue that both of these should have come with more VRAM anyway. One interesting thing to note here is that the 3070 Ti actually has a considerably wider memory bus width at 256 bits compared to just 192 on the newer 4070 Ti. That means fewer bits can be transmitted at any one time. Basically, less data can get from the VRAM to the GPU. Now, Nvidia has bumped up the memory clock from 1188 MHz to 1313 MHz, but that's still about 20% slower overall when you consider the around 10% boosting clock speed, but the 33% smaller memory bus. So you get more memory, but you can't access it as fast. Amazing. Now, performance-wise, at 1440p, you can expect a reasonable amount more performance. Cyberpunk on medium settings has the 4070 Ti at 183 FPS average, whereas the 3070 Ti is down at 144. That is 28% faster, a pretty sizable performance advantage. Interestingly, the 1% lows actually aren't any better here, so while you do get more performance, it's less stable performance. Happily, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider on high settings, both results rise with I think the biggest performance delta at 45% more from the 4070 Ti, netting 228 FPS average versus 158 FPS from the 3070 Ti. Equally, the 1% low at lows rose as well, going from 124 FPS to 165 FPS. That's great news. Fortnite isn't quite as impressive, with just 19% more performance from the newer generation card. You go from 171 FPS to 204 FPS, a difference you would struggle to notice even on a 240Hz 1440p monitor. The 1% lows rising from 96 to 126 might be more noticeable though, especially as that is a 31% increase, in fact a decent bit higher than the average performance increase too. Microsoft Flight Simulator is a similar story on the averages, jumping from 112 to 135 FPS. That is a more noticeable difference, and means if you don't mind slightly less performance, you can also crank up the settings to add some visual fidelity as you have a decent amount of horsepower, and you don't need to sacrifice that much. The 1% lows don't move quite as much, going from 90 to 98 FPS. Hitman 3 has one of the larger differences at 36% more performance on average, going from 180 FPS to 246, 
That's pretty impressive, and that's looking at the GPU-specific performance the built-in benchmark provides. The 1% lows follow suit with a 25% uplift, going from 126 to 158 FPS. And lastly, in Rainbow Six Siege, there's a, actually a pretty surprising difference in performance, over 100 FPS no less. Now, it's still only 31% faster, but going from 385 FPS to 506 seems like a pretty big deal. That is on the medium preset, so again, if you wanted to crank up the visual quality, you're unlikely to be dipping anywhere near your monitor's refresh rate, let alone to unplayable levels. On average, the 4070 Ti I have here, this MSI Supreme X card, which is absolutely massive by the way, it's easily quadruple slots, but anyway, is about 25% faster than this ASUS Strix RTX 3070 Ti at 1440p. I did also benchmark at 1080p just to see the differences, but with this much horsepower, most of the games become relatively CPU bound, meaning the 4070 CTI only ran about 10% faster on average. The big catch here, of course, is the price tag. This MSI Supreme X card retails for £950. Basically a thousand pounds for a 4070 Ti. That's frankly insane. Even using a more reasonable card as the pricing benchmark, you're looking at about £800 on the lower end, compared to around £500 for a new 3070 Ti. If you're willing to buy a used card, the 3070 Ti can be had for more like 300 to, uh, 350 to 400 pounds, which means they're basically half price uh, compared to a new 4070 Ti. You do only get 8 gigabytes of VRAM, but of course, you could always buy a higher end used card, like a 3080 Ti with the same 12 gig of VRAM, although that has an even wider 384 bit uh, wide memory bus, so you might actually be able to make use of that RAM. Hell, even a used 3090 is only about £700, making it considerably cheaper than one of these 4070 Ti's, and it comes with 24GB of VRAM and a whole lot more horsepower. In short then, despite the 4070 Ti being a rebadged 4080 class card, the value proposition puts it up against some of the highest end cards from the last generation and it really doesn't stack up all that well. It's not exactly that much faster than the 3070 Ti, and for effectively double the price, even comparing new to new, it's really, really hard to recommend one of these. At sort of half the price, I would think that this is a pretty decent deal, but of course it isn't, and so we're left with the world we have. Of course, those are my thoughts, but I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the 4070 Ti 12 gig? Is it a card you would pick up yourself? Would you go with something of the older variety? Or are you just sticking with what you've got for the time being until maybe something better actually comes out? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. If you are interested in a 4070 Ti, of course I will link to it in the description if you fancy it, uh, but otherwise there are also a load of other links in the description you can use to support the channel and keep these videos coming. Of course, you can also subscribe just to be notified. You can check out plenty of more videos on the end cards when they pop up in a second. And that's kind of it, really. If you want to support the channel, like I said, there's loads of links in the description. You can even do, do so through YouTube or Patreon or pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one. And uh, yeah, that's kind of it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.